Hello, you are watching, listening and enjoying Where My Pros At Movie Edition here Ooh. on YouTube. Thank you for tuning in. Um, this week we are going to be reviewing what? This week we are going to be reviewing the original uh, Stefford Wives. Now, if you are longtime fans of the show, you will know that we have read the book. And so we thought we would do uh, the 1970s version and the 2000s version with Nicole Kidman. So watch for that video as well. That will be coming out soon. Also, you might notice that we have a little bit of a change, a little bit of a change in scenery. And the fact that Brutus is no longer sitting here with us. This is in fact Tank slash Easter Bunny. Um, and he loves he, accessories. He loves accessories. Yeah, he, he's, he's his mother's dog. He is. He's definitely in many ways. We like our sparkles. Um, but Tank is our God. How old is he now? Uh, he's like eight. So eight, eight. He's a rescue dog, so we're not sure. But Tank is our eight-year-old, eight, nine-year-old eight, nine uh, Rhodesian Ridgeback Boxer mix, and we love him very much. Brought him all the way from Scotland to the U.S. Yep. Yep. His favorite things are cheese, my best friend, and licking his butthole. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Uh, so let's begin on our first ever movie review. Um, so what are your thoughts on the film overall compared to the book that we have previously reviewed? I wrote down a quote. Um, this may not be a slasher movie with a serial killer. This may not be a supernatural horror with ghosts and demons. But believe me when I say that this is a horror movie. This is absolutely a horror movie. It's a psychological horror movie. It's kind of along the lines of Rosemary's Baby for me. It wasn't as good as Rosemary's Baby, but there was still so much to talk about in this film alone. I really enjoyed it. Like when I read I I Ira... Ira's, uh, uh, sorry, when I read Ira's book, The Stepford Wives, which is a short little like vicious book, this is kind of what I was envi envisioning. And I think, I think there's some minor issues, but overall for me, I really enjoyed it. What about you? Um, I think this uh, is a good example of what happens when a book turns into a movie format. You lose some of the original depth and a lot of what you like to be hinted at is no longer there and instead, instead is explicitly stated, mm -hmm. which is a bit of a shame. Um, and I think that was kind of shown in, in this movie. Um, however, I did enjoy it. I'm not going to say it wasn't good. I think for a movie adap uh, adaptation, it was pretty good. Um, my, my main problem with it was actually just that the characters weren't really written weren't really shown as they were written you know what I mean like they were personality wise but they weren't in terms of appearance they didn't seem like how I'd imagined or what was painted by the book in my mind okay. um, so that was, that was a little off-putting it's not a big deal it's just one of those things that just happens so the characters didn't look like you thought they would yeah aside from like you have to leave it up to a little bit of artistic that you know Absolutely. direction and there is a place for you know films that are kind of like by the book completely laid out but i do like you know a director kind of taking his own their own spin on the for story. sure they have to to some extent i mean the the, the fact the mere fact that not every single minute detail is physically described they have to do something the way they fill in the gaps i felt like a lot of the dialogue as well though in the film was kind of awkward and i don't know if it was meant to be like awkward like when for example when she has all the men over, you know, to discuss like, you know, they're they're having a cakewalk or or something and you know, it was very an awkward situation and it just kind of goes to show how different we change socially decade to decade to cuz I, I I for me that that was just such a strange interaction for them to have and for, if so if I was hosting your friends and we were discussing something no one was listening to me, I probably would have said something a bit more i can see where she wouldn't El and also i definitely would have said something if someone was drawing me and sketching me without saying anything yeah yeah, yeah absolutely um but i think that's an interesting point on on feminism and how it's changed over the ages is uh women's place in society was sadly a lesser one then um, and while it's not an equal an equal one just yet it is it has certainly improved and that's a good thing for us to also notice as well i also think it's interesting how um joanna is kind of seen she's she's written as this kind of feminist he's so adorable this kind of this feminist like heroine who's supposed to be you know standing up for women's liberation and she's definitely interested in that but she still had such kind of i don't know more kind of old-fashioned tendencies in, in some some scenes like um 
don't know, the fact that, like, she, I don't know, picked up and, and moved because moved her husband wanted to move. You know, or, I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm making a silly point, but... No, that, that seems like a good point. She didn't want to move. She was very happy in the city. She said she was a city girl, but she trusted her husband's judgment. Mm -hmm. And that, I don't know if that's just a single instance or if that's uh, indicative of a societal difference. Um, well, it probably is both. As we're saying that, I just, I just flash into my head about how I've... <laughs> moved here for you um, so I mean maybe maybe that is the kind of thing that like in a healthy relationship you know it's 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 it's, give a, and take. it's, it's a give and take mm -hmm. um, and definitely was it a give and take with Walter and Joanna no it was a uh, we're moving yeah but I would love well not not just that you know I'm replacing you with a robot now bye yeah can I just say also one of my favorite scenes? Sorry, I'd, I'm really interested to see what you have written down in your notes, but I want to say that no, this, take your time. this is like one of my favorite scenes, and what really turned into a horror movie for me is the you know um, the robot Joanna. I'm just gonna say robot because we're not exactly sure. It's heavily implied that they are robots with Diz and things like that. Um, oh, thank you, uh, robot Joanna. You know who's as she's advancing towards real Joanna. Spoilers, by the way. All of our film, all of our, all of our videos have spoilers. Um, she's wearing this kind of like teal nightgown, and it's see-through. And you know, normally what would be seen as this kind of sexual form, the female form, it's this kind of horrific. I don't know. She looked like a monster to me, you know, with this kind of gauzy, these gauzy breasts, you know, kind of heading menacingly towards Joanna, who is cowering in fear. Like that said to me that this is, this is, I don't know, the female form in itself is kind of like this horrific monster, where they kind of turned it this this tool into a tool, and I just I, I thought that was a really powerful scene. Well, they truly turned the woman into the I ideal. Uh, you know, perfect woman for the men in this book, which or, or in this in this film, which is uh, an object, mm -hmm. right? And that's what's really scary is you see her as an object there, and I think that's the scary thing. You know, find well at that point that that's no human. Well, it wasn't so much. I mean, yeah, and it was also kind of you know the 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 nudity as well. Mm. You know, this very focused. There was a point in where the camera wasn't even showing her face anymore. It was just showing this breasts and in in her vagina through this gauzy you know mm -hmm. feminine film of the nightgown and I just but it was menacing as well I thought that was really well done agreed also the last parting shot I know I know you weren't a big fan of this you said it took too long and did it take a long time I love that I there was subtlety there I'm being too art house about it but I really love that I really love this kind of it just it was a snapshot of what life in Stepford was for these women absolutely this I, mundane kind of swanning through the i i agree i just disagree that it was Same a snapshot to everyone yeah i yeah. agree i just don't agree it was a snapshot it was about six or seven of the, of, uh, iterations of the exact same thing again and again i think one or two two would have been uh, sufficient you would yes, have gotten the point but that's it was a minor thing it was it was very minor right I it's just i was just like okay that was the point is this monotony where you're kind of like oh god like how could someone like sure. sit through that three would have done then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like it kind of pushes you to your brink of, of annoyance and this monotony and realizing that you are human and that you are allowed to like be like oh fuck I just want to go to the grocery store and my sweats and not have to say hello to anyone you know that seems like that is genuinely my personal hell genuinely my personal hell so one of the interesting things about um, the, the film in general that I didn't expect from the book was the era because the the book was written in the era. This is at the forefront of women's liberation when the 60s have kind of died down and we're kind of like women have to kind of settle into these. Yes. You know, so because it was gender norms. Because this was written in the 70s, it felt like the um you know, you, you didn't have much description of it being the 70s. You know what I mean? Like, it, you didn't get that feeling from the from the book. It just felt like it was just now, effectively. Yeah. I mean, the technology was a little bit different. Bye. But, you know, it didn't, it didn't feel like a different a different time entirely. Um, but the film really sold that, and it was, and it was an un, unexpected and a bit of a shock to me, um, which is odd. I, well, I, if I could comment on that, I think that, you know, like, take a book that, was, that came out in 2021 and then a film made out about it as well. Like, we wouldn't see, we would be like, oh, that's just... It's and just it wasn't, it, yeah. I mean, it wasn't, it's hard. We don't often see a lot of films, like, nowadays that are, like, 
with this kind of nostalgia thing like everything is like purposely like this is the 80s like stranger things this is the 80s mm -hmm. like we're purposely doing like a, a, a thing whereas this is just this is just how it was it's just life it's just yeah life. yeah you know, it's like instead of saying um i don't know they walked into the the, uh, uh, the living room that had lovely wallpaper they might just say lovely wallpaper, but we would now look it back and say it was like a gaudy green and freaking pink, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I did notice that actually in their their house, their Connecticut house, and uh, and the, like it was very like lots of brass and kind of like horrible like floral patterns mm. and you could tell this was supposed to be upper class like yeah. ooh, I was like oh my gosh for us looking through the lens for me it, I was like that's <laughs> that's so bad it's funny because it, it made me think this reminds me of my grand's house when I was a kid my, my nanny's house because um, she had a lot of stuff I guess that she must have bought in the 70s and 80s and just sort of stuck around his furniture right mm -hmm. so I, I remember it just looked old to me yeah. I didn't even think. I, I, then it clicked. It's like, oh, that's seventies, right? But yeah, it's crazy to think that there was a time when that was just new out in theaters. Yeah. And like, oh my gosh, oh, I have that bedspread, or yeah, oh, oh I want to go get that bedspread down at Woolworths or wherever they shopped in the seventies. <laughs> Safeway and Woolworths. Safeway. Uh, <laughs> one of the really interesting points as well was um, uh, the husband's first uh, time seeing one of the robot ladies. Um, his his I, I paid close attention to his thoughts on it because it's never explicitly told if they moved to Stepford because he knew what was going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't think he did. I think he did. I don't think he knew fully. I think he I think he liked the idea of that general sexist viewpoint, obviously, but I don't think he knew literally what was going on with the robot stuff. Right. That was that's my opinion at the start. But when he first saw those women, I, I that's why I kept the careful eye. You still can't really tell. But the first things I saw in his face was lust and a sort of distant confusion <laughs> right it's because yeah. when you first saw it it was like ooh, hello lust and distant confusion yeah that is quite a mix <laughs> uh, yeah I, I, oh sorry lust and or apprehension <laughs> that's what i wrote yeah yeah right like it was I like i'm slightly scared and aroused <laughs> main emotions of the film is like lust and apprehension <laughs> yeah well I, I think it was quite interesting throughout you saw the guys especially uh, you, you see them uh, sort of hesitate, you know, they're, they're thinking back and forth and they often start getting drunk when they're, they're coming to the decision process of should I replace my wife? Because mm -hmm. they're coming, they're, they're like, oh, well, I do love her and, you know, I'm, she's a human being, I guess, and all this sort of thing, you know, oh, side note. Um, I'm obviously being sarcastic here. So all the awkwardness uh, and, and, and that the decision-making process that the husbands are going through is really interesting. And I think that's a really fascinating part of the film. And it seems like they all, every single one, decide to replace the woman. And that's, that's well, really interesting. we don't know what happened to the ones that decided they didn't, you know. If there was ever a second part to this book, that's what I would like to hear about. What happens to the, the, the guys who rebel and such as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, not to they probably wouldn't it, go there, but we it kind of explores that in the, in the remake. One of the strange things I noticed about the era as well um, was that the uh, there was a uh, when when they were, they were shopping, I heard the announcer mention, "Ladies, there's a special on watermelons." It was just so so jarring. I was like, it said, "Ladies." That's so, like, it's just, that was so normal back then because it was the women who did the shopping. And it's just such a minor thing that I take it past you by. That's yeah, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, that, oh, that to me, I was like, oh, wow, that's yeah. weird, right? Yeah. I wrote, uh, Bobby, much prettier than I expected in the film. And the, she's the character who, uh, in the book, I'm pretty sure is written as being uh, short, larger, and uh, generally unattractive and dresses tomboyish. Mm -hmm. hate the word, but that's the word that I think is most appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, so I felt like they kind of did a disservice to the character because that, that, that I think that represented the juxtaposition to the traditional sexy lady according to this, in this film, right? I liked her for that, you know? I liked the fact that she was a real woman. Well, you know, I, I absolutely, I do agree with you and I see where you're coming from, but I also kind of like to play devil's advocate, the actress that played her was also excellent. She was oh right. yeah, she did a good job. She, Very good you know, job. And if you're, you're, you're pretty, conventionally pretty, and you still do a good job, you should still get the the position you know we're fighting for a world where you don't have to be un like conventionally unattractive or conventionally attractive you know as long as you have the skills to do what it is that you want to do uh you know appearance unless appearance in the very niche parts plays into it parents really shouldn't play into it so i'm i'm you know we don't really know i was going back scene back back 
scenes, but I enjoyed her character. I do like I do like what they did with her in the remake. It's probably one of the things I really liked the most about the the movie. Not to spoil too much, um, but like this 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 character, she was really funny. Uh, I re I really enjoyed every time she was on screen. I did kind of, I did have a slight complaint. Where when after Shibabi gets rob robosized, uh, I didn't really notice. Like I was like, okay, like yeah, it wasn't that's the like that much of a of a personality change. Like yeah, she wore a prettier dress, and obviously she started glitching towards the end, and that was kind of upsetting. Like that, though. I mean, that was obviously you know you, you're like okay, you know she's a robot, but I was like. I don't know. They're like they should have marked it a bit more. I felt like it should have been marked. That's part of the problem. That's why I wrote that down. Is that like she was too pretty at the start. She should have been like. I think yeah. it had anything to do with her being pretty. I think that was part of it. I think it was her. You know, she was the same cadence, the same yes. kind of like everything that she was saying. It felt like it was the the same as when she was pre robot. Yeah. Um, it's interesting you say about the actors being chosen. They shouldn't be chosen based on the, based on their looks. I, 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 this is the one field in all of jobs where I think that's not the case. I think you can absolutely choose. But if you wanted to choose a person of color, you should get the person of color. If you need a black person, white person, short person, tall person, traditionally handsome, traditionally ugly person, whatever. I think that's the time to do it. It's acting. Mm. Yeah, and that way you can hire people who normally wouldn't get hired as well. And I, I like that. Mm. So the drawing scene where, where she's being drawn, um, I noticed that in the book she seems to be disgusted, but in the film she seems to enjoy it. That weirded me out. I thought that was a bit of a juxtaposition. Maybe she was just trying to be polite or something as a polite face. She was trying to be polite, but also like what she said immediately was like, oh my god, like I used to read your magazines all the time. Like I kind of get where she's coming from. Like at first I would have been like, Ew, what are you, what, what are you doing? Like stop this. But if I realized it was like a famous artist or, you know, like this, you know, someone who was really famous for, you know, the magazines or something, I would be like, oh my gosh, yes, I want to keep this, this, you know, this drawing. I'm going to put it up in like, in, you know, the nicest part of my house. So, mm. yeah. For sure. The sex scene part where they barge into uh, Frank's house and he's having sex with his robot lady um, and they just stand there and listen awkwardly for an obnoxious amount of time. One, breaking and entering. Okay, fine, they're trying to investigate a potential criminal thing, but they don't suspect that at that part, right? They don't they, leave they, their doors locked and stuff. Well, sure, but that doesn't make... Mean, it's a different, different era, context. maybe. And back then, I know it was more... I remember in the 90s when I had friends visiting, sometimes they would, I could say, just, you know, come on in, and that would be fine, and I get that. But they didn't know these people <laughs> very well at all, and they just walked in, and they were having sex. And that's the, the, that's the ultimate reason that you don't walk in, you know, in case the people are having sex or, or something. Or, you know, like, I don't know, pooping with the door open or something. Yeah, exactly. You know? like, or just privacy. being in your home by yourself. You know? <laughs> I, yeah, I, I feel like there was a lot of, like, kind of awkward scenes. Like, you know, there were... I don't know if it was just like the the decade or the writing, but there were some scenes that did not. I was like, this makes no sense. Yeah, like, the timing you know, was bad. Mundane and, and mundane things, not like story things, but just like talk, like weird little yeah. conversations and stuff. It Agreed. Felt very kind of, I don't know, strange. Artificial. Artificial, yeah. There was one scene where um, the, oh, shit, what was her name? The lady who really enjoyed playing sports in her back garden. Oh, Carol? I think it was Carol. Carol? Tennis court. Yeah, tennis court, yeah. Um, uh, one, of the, I think it was, so Bobby says, um, I have two teenage boy, boys at homes with erections, awkwardly. You had a problem with that when we read the book. Yes, well. I did. We've already discussed it. It's gross. It's weird. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that's why I wrote like it. It was an under the belt joke that Bobby that, shouldn't have said. That's why the comment that I wrote at the time was, I'm so glad they kept that in. <laughs> I mean, it was the 70s. That was pretty tame for the 70s. My God, the 70s is crazy. Um, and actually, funnily enough, is that you're talking about you, the conversations feeling artificial. The one place where I didn't feel they were artificial at all was the conversation between Bobby and Joanna. I felt they were really realistic and natural. I think every other conversation was, mm -hmm. was st stunted and, and jilted and just didn't feel right. But, um, like, for example, there was one part where, where they, were, they were talking and walking one direction. They went, oh, we're going the wrong way. And they had to turn around and go. The, like, it was such a little thing. And I was like, that felt so real to me. They did. They felt, well, they, I, I Their friendship that. was legitimate. They felt like real humans. Like, they felt like real humans. And yeah. I, I, maybe, that was a, that, maybe that was a choice is that, you know, these are the, this is the real kind of conversations that you would have with a normal person every day. And everything else is this kind of artificial kind of like, oh, I'm, j I'm just, I just must have that right. 
recipe kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was funny, yeah. Oh my gosh, and the, can I just talk about the costumes? Like, I don't know, when I think of Stepford, I have this image in my head of a 50s housewife. Yeah. Um, and so this, you know, it was kind of interesting to see the 70s take on it. Obviously, the 70s take on it is the take on it, because it was written in the 70s. But for me, it's completely different from what I, like, would have considered a, a housewife to wear. Well, it's because it's, it's a very conservative town. So generally speaking, conservative or traditional. Very so, angelic. Yeah, but traditional usually means historic as well like you don't you don't find conservatives doing new interesting modern things they didn't so you, you're completely right that i also would have thought it'd be like an older style like the 50s yeah so i think my favorite quote of the film was uh, joanna saying to her therapist if i'm wrong i'm insane if i'm right then it's worse i think that kind of like sums up the psychological terror of this is mm. even if this is happening who's going to believe you yeah. You know, we can't even, like, nowadays, we can't even agree on, like, important things that are actually happening, like climate change or some stuff, you know? So this is, I can't imagine, I just can't imagine, like, experiencing this or having the suspicions that something so left field, is out of left field is happening, but you can't tell anyone. Yeah. And, you know, the therapist was good. Like, I actually was expecting the therapist, you know, because we, we've kind of get into a trope with movies where, like, the person thinks they're crazy but goes for help for with someone like a police officer or a therapist and they don't believe them. And it's just, it's a worn rut. It was kind of nice to see. And she was like, I, I have to go away, but I am going to come back and help you. But it just wasn't enough. Yeah. Which even that, like, that felt like that really hit me with despair. There was no way Joanna was getting out of this. Yeah. So overall, what would you rate this film? Um, let's just let's try and rate it standalone as a film, just like a film, okay. and let's then also try and rate it in reference to the book. So out of five, sure. Okay, standalone, I'd give it a four. Um, I really enjoyed, like I think even if I had never heard of the Stepford Wives, and this would have unsettled me. This would have, I would have watched this and been like, oh my god, mm -hmm. like it's the kind of film that you think about days, weeks, months later, yeah. you know, and it kind of plays on your mind and you kind of imagine what it would be like. And uh, I just, I can't. So, and in relation to the book, it was a very faithful adaptation. There's a few minor details with like the characters and stuff, but I thought, you know, I thought it did a pretty good job. I thought it did a really good job of kind of capturing that slow creeping horror and, and you know, the kind of feel of, of, of Stepford and feel of the men's association and yeah. I enjoyed it. Okay. What about you? Um, I, I largely agree. I would probably give the standalone a four star rating um, if I didn't know about the book and everything because I thought it was quite, quite a unique concept and so on. Um, and I think it was mostly well done. Um, however, um, in relation to the book, I would give it a three star, teetering towards two actually, um, because there's a really tough a major difference that we haven't discussed yet, which is that in the book, everything, well, we mentioned it briefly at the start, but every, every woman, robot person is hinted to not be human. And that's it. You don't know what they really are. And that mis mystery is part of the horror. Mm -hmm. You don't know what those things are. Mm -hmm. you know, like, there's just some hints as to what they could be. There's, there's, there's some hints. the Disneyland thing. They the touched on that, robots. yeah. That must have really freaked people out, but by like, the way. Oh, yeah, I understand Because, like, like, this is, you know... Mm -hmm. But my initial thoughts was it was going to be, like, a reprogramming of the mind. And maybe some animatronic stuff was added on to, to make you, I don't know, have bigger breasts or whatever. That, that's, that's pretty much what I thought, really. Um, I didn't think much further than that. But this book, the, the film just said, oh, no, they're just robots. They're just all robots. And I, I think it did a good job for that. Like I said, standalone, it would be great. But in relation to the book, I much preferred the mystery. And I, I think that's a hard thing to do was in a film. She a robot? Because I think they yeah. still didn't answer it. Are you sure? Yeah, she's a robot. Was that a robot? No, she stabbed one and it didn't bleed, and then she went and saw her copy. Yeah, of course it's a robot. Okay, yeah, all right. Okay, so it did kind of have a more definitive ending um, than the book, and I, I have to agree with you there that the book, I did kind of like that it was heavily implied that it, they were robots, but it wasn't answered. Yeah. And I think the general consensus is that they are robots, which is a great stand-in for what you know, these, you know, archaic feminine, archa you know, ar archetypes that we, you know, women are ex expected to, to clean and, you know, and, and raise the children. All the things that we have robots 
real world bits now yes. to do for us. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, I, to me, the horror aspect came from it being an unknown, and I, I genuinely thought it was some sort of brainwashing, or you know, they were still sentient and in there, but sort of like trapped inside this mm -hmm. their mind and seeing yeah. everything and doing everything, but they had no choice. Like that Black Mirror episode. Yeah, so they're effectively slaves, is the way I saw it, which I thought was a terrifying prospect. Well, they are slaves. <laughs> But they they die. But they're not, they don't have the sentience. The kind they're not of slaves, life. they're just robots. Let's not go down this stuff. We did life like last week. Let's not, let's not, a few weeks ago. Let's not do that again. Um, point being, uh, you know, I, I thought they were actual human slaves who were, you know, controlled right. by some, some means. Mm -hmm. And that was a terrifying thought to me. Yeah. But that was, I guess that's one, that's headcanon, isn't it? I mean, yeah, like, it's still kind of horrific. Like, I can't imagine some big-breasted version of me, like, coming towards me and, like, going to strangle me or whatever it is. It should of course, that was, that was good. Stand alone. But like I said, compared yeah. to the book. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Well, shall we close up the video or do you have any final parting thoughts? Uh, no parting thoughts. Uh, this was a very enjoyable watch. I recommend you watch the original film. It is good, but uh, the book is better. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for watching this uh, special movie edition of Where My Pros At here on YouTube on Versus the World Video YouTube channel. Um, we will be back soon with more. Our, our next uh, episode is going to be covering the next Stepford Wife's book. So thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back then. Yep. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye.